Hi there, this is Ryan Niemeyer, and today is October 25th, 2013, and the Knockout Core team is happy to release Knockout 3.0 today. I want to take a quick lap through some of the changes and features that are included in Knockout 3.0. So let's get started. One of the major features in Knockout 3.0 is that bindings are now evaluated independently on a single element. So in Knockout 2.3, if I had a scenario where I had multiple bindings on an element, in this case, I have a visible binding, a template binding, and I actually just have something, just a bogus binding on here. And I have a checkbox where I can toggle that show, show editor Boolean. And as I'm toggling it, we can see that my count is updating. That means that this is getting evaluated again and again. And I actually have a date down in my template to say when was that template rendered. And we can see 9.13.59, 9.14.02. So anytime that this, this show editor is getting updated, all of these bindings are running, and this is making it so the template is re-rendered. So now in Knockout 3.0 with the same scenario, as I'm changing show editor, the count is not going up at all. And it says 9.14.13 for the time the template was rendered, and that's not changing. So each of these bindings is evaluated independently. An inter interesting thing to note here is that this binding, since it's not an actual binding, uh, and now the evaluation of this part of the binding doesn't happen until someone actually accesses it through either the value accessor argument or the all bindings accessor argument. So this now doesn't run at all. So if you had code that relied on something like this, or you had a custom binding that didn't grab its own dependencies and it just relied on some other binding on the element from triggering, then that's a case where you will, you may want to revisit that functionality and make sure that you're tracking your own dependencies appropriately. So the next feature is ordered bindings. Knockout 3.0 now has some functionality to ensure that bindings can run in a specific order. So here's Knockout 2.3. And I have a case where I have a list of items and I have an observable array of selected items. So I have one and three. And up here I'm looping through those items and I'm using a checked binding against that array. And then I'm, I'm specifying that the value of the input should be um, the, this string here, whatever the, the item's value is. So what I should expect right now is that one and three are selected and I ought to see that they are checked up here, but I don't. If I were to check something, it'll actually correct it, but that initial state is wrong. And the only reason for that is because the bindings are specified in the wrong order. The checked binding has initially run before my value has been set. So if I were to do it like this, now we can see that it's set appropriately. So in Knockout 3.0, there is now some functionality to ensure that bindings can, bindings can basically declare dependencies where they need to run after other bindings. So in this case, I have it specified in the wrong order, but in Knockout 3.0, that doesn't matter. So if you ran into something like this in the past, it's kind of aggravating because it looks like everything is correct uh, the way you've specified it, but it just happened to be a problem with the order. And so some extra details on that. The check binding now will run after the value or the attribute binding. The value binding will run after options or for each. And selected options, again, will run after options or for each. Custom bindings can participate in this as well. So we have our init or update functions like before, but now we can actually specify an after property where we can include a list of bindings that we want to ensure run after our binding. So that's pretty useful uh, when you're collaborating with different bindings on the same element. Knockout 3.0 includes a new binding called checked value. And so this is kind of our scenario we had before. Our only option previously was that we were using this attribute. We were specifying the value of the input. And so I had to basically pick a property on my object. It could be the idea, it could be the name, and that's what gets put into our observable array. I'm running out just what's in that array, so I just am putting one and two in there. But a lot of times what you might want to do is actually select the object. You want to put that object into the array. And so it wasn't easy out of the box to do that. You need to use some type of custom binding to make that work. But now in Knockout 3.0, we have this checked value binding that lets you directly specify, hey, what value do I want to use? So now again, when I'm doing one and two, I'm putting, uh, I'm putting that into the observable array. And in this case, I'm running out the name. 
so you can see that the actual object now is getting put in there and so I can control it if I want to put the ID in there um, and change this to dollar data I could do that and now it should be one and two but the nice thing here is it's not putting it as the value on the input turning it into a string uh, the, if I do it this way it's actually going to use that number uh, which for matching purposes may be useful or may have caused you issues in the past so that's the checked value binding uh, in Knockout 3.0, custom bindings have some additional functionality that you can use, a pre-process function. And so here's Knockout 2.3, and I have a custom binding called value with init. And what this one does is it checks if a property exists on, your, on the current context. If it doesn't, it creates it as an observable on the fly and populates it with the element's value. So I say value with init, I pass first as a string and I have a value here, so it ends up, I'm applying bindings with an empty object. What this ends up doing is just creating that first observable on my view model and populating it with Bob. And so you can see that that's all hooked up here. Um, so that's fine. I mean, this, this is just a custom binding you could create in Knockout 2.3. But what I wanted to show is that in Knockout 3.0, you can actually use a pre-process. You can add a pre-process function to your custom binding. And what that does is it, it takes in a value, a name, and an add binding callback. And what these are, these are the strings. So value is the string that is specified after the binding. Name is the name of the binding. And add binding callback is a function you can use to add additional bindings. So what I can do in Knockout 3.0, if I don't like having to wrap this in a string like this, if I just think the syntax is kind of ugly and I want to clean that up, I can actually say, yeah, I'm going to wrap that in a string automatically. Uh, here and then call my original binding. So it lets you intercept uh, the binding string and do some interesting things with it. Uh, you could use default values, you could do um, a different syntax, a dotted or a dash syntax and parse it out. And here's a case, here I have a binding called live and all I'm doing in it is I'm taking, um, adding the after key down value update binding or binding option and then I'm actually adding the value binding with this string that I added here. And so all this is doing is this is manipulating that binding string to, to add these additional bindings. You could do this before with a custom binding, but this is a really slick, uh, a really short syntax for making that happen. And now we can see that it's updating live. So this is all it takes to, to do that. I mean, I don't even need the binding. There's no init or update function. All it is is it, it just pre-processes the binding to add um, other bindings on it. So that's uh, the pre-process handler of custom bindings or of binding handlers. The next thing I want to talk about is the pre-process node function that you can now include on binding providers. So a binding provider is an extensibility point in Knockout that lets you decide how Knockout is going to determine if an element has bindings and what those bindings are. So the default binding provider in Knockout will say, hey, if you're an element, you need to have a data dash bind attribute, and I'm going to parse that string to determine what the bindings are. So with a custom binding provider, you could uh, do some other, you could determine what, what the bindings are in a different way. You could maybe use different attributes with convention-based approach, something like that. Uh, and that's something you could do in Knockout 2. Uh, but now in Knockout 3.0, there is this pre-process node function. And normally you would you would swap out the binding provider with your own. In this case, I'm just actually adding this preprocess node function onto the current one. And what I'm doing here is I'm I've specified an element called Ryan. I've specified a template called Ryan. And all my preprocess node function is doing is saying, hey, if I'm an element, if I'm an element, grab the the name of my tag, see if there's an element in the DOM uh, that matches. If so. I'm going to create a new div, I'm going to put a template binding on it, and then I'm going to insert it and remove the original node. So I'm going to remove this, replace it with a div that has the template binding on it, and now the template is rendered. So there's a lot of interesting things you could do with this preprocess node functionality. This is just, just something that you could do. Uh, Michael Best, uh, one of the core developers who, who really did the majority of the work for Knockout 3.0, um, He's done some really fantastic work, and he has a plugin called knockout.punches that I'll show a little bit later as well. But 
he uses this technique to allow you to specify, uh, let's say you want to use handlebar syntax, it actually goes through and it, and it swaps that with the actual bindings that are needed, a containerless text binding. So now I can change this, um, and instead of having to put a span here or that containerless syntax with the comments, I can just use handlebar syntax. And again, this is not in Knockout 3.0, this is part of a plugin, but it's the type of thing that you can do with the extensibility points in 3.0. Uh, dynamic binding. So Knockout has an extensibility point in 3.0 called get binding handler. So it's a, it's a function on the KO object. And by default, all this does is it takes a key to a binding and it returns the object from ko.bindinghandler. So if you say value, it's going to return the, the object from ko.bindinghandlers.value, which has an init and an update function. You can actually override this get binding handler function and make some, some of your own decisions. In this case, I'm caching off the original one and then I'm going to call it to see if there is a binding. And if not, I'm going to do something different. So in this case, I have a binding up here. It says title description. Title is not a binding handler that Knockout releases. I did not create a binding handler for title. But what's going to happen in my get binding handler function, the one I've specified, is going to say, hey, if I can't find the binding, then I'm going to assume that it means that I just need to update the attribute uh, using the, the key. So I'm going to update the title attribute with whatever the value is. So here, if I hover over, I can see that it updated it with the title. So this code is a little bit naive. You probably, every single binding that doesn't exist, you wouldn't want to just assume that it sets an attribute, maybe something like value update or other bindings that are just used as options. You know, maybe you'd want to do something like this where you prefix it with something like attribute dot or attribute dash. And then in your get binding handler, you could check to see if it has that type of a prefix in, and use that to decide if you're actually going to do that. So it's, there's some interesting things you could, you could do with that functionality. Um, I could actually here, I could say ko.binding handlers binding key equals binding. I could actually create it as a binding handler, and then next time I come through, it'll actually find it, and I won't have to uh, go through here again. So that's an option. Uh, another exciting change in Knockout 3.0 is that there's now the ability to subscribe to array changes. Previously, if, if you subscribe to an observable array, you would just get the current value, the current array each time. Now you're able to actually subscribe to array changes. So the third, the third argument to the subscribe function is a topic. By default in Knockout, that topic is change, so you normally don't even specify it. There is an option to do before change where you can receive the value before it's changed. That's something that was in, in uh, Knockout 2.0. Um, but now there's this array change option, and that's going to give you an array that describes what was added, what was removed, what was moved. And normally you would pass some type of handler. In this case, I'm actually just passing an observable because I want to populate it with the value of these changes. And then I'm going to display them in the UI over here. So as I do things like add items, you can see I have an array of changes. And the changes each have a status that say added. It says what index it was added at. And then the value will be a reference to the actual item that was added. Um, so I can do things like when I clear, I get two things that were deleted and the index they were deleted at. Again, I can add them. Um, I can swap things. When, I sw when things actually get swapped, uh, you'd still get the added and deleted, no uh, added and deleted notifications, but it actually indicates as well that they were moved and where they were moved from. So there's some interesting things you could do to understand how your array is changing. And Steve Sanderson is working on a plugin, working on releasing a plugin that has some interesting map and filter functionality based on this. Another thing to note is that uh, these changes are calculated as efficiently as possible. So things like push and pop and splice are all hooked into to, to already build this, this change list. So we don't have to actually diff the array to, to understand what the changes were. So that's the array change subscriptions you can do on observable arrays now. The next thing that I want to talk about is computed notifications. So, so previously in Knockout, observables would not notify any subscribers if they contained a primitive value and that value did not change. So if you updated an observable with the same value, 
it wouldn't actually notify anyone for efficiency. Computed, however, did notify. So I, I have a sample scenario here where I have uh, a button that's enabled based on a computer called can add items. Can add items just checks if there's less than five items. So when I go one, two, three, four, now it's disabled. If I add a little counter to it, so if I subscribe to can add items and update a counter every time it's notified, I can see that one, two, three, four, it keeps getting notified. And that means that the bindings will be running each time, even though they, they really don't need to because the value is not even changing from false to true. So now in knockout 3.0, the way that it works now is that computers that return primitives would only notify when they actually change. So here, nobody's notified, nobody's notified. Finally, it changed from, from true to false, and I got my notification. So generally, that's going to really help performance in cases where maybe you didn't even realize that bindings were running more often than you needed. Uh, if you do have a scenario where you really want the old functionality, you can add an extender and say notify always, always, and uh, now it'll behave like it did before. So you might have some very specific scenarios where you're expecting that computed to, maybe there's some some byproduct of it that you want other things to notify. Um, the, the, the guts of the computer will still be running each time. It's just whether things get notified by it. So I don't think there's too many cases where you would really need that. But if you are subscribing to it and expecting it to happen every time, then you can add that extender. So that's computed notifications. Some other miscellaneous changes, just to mention, you can now bind to detached nodes. Uh, you can, there's a context variable called dollar raw data that lets you get the original data. So if you had an array of observables or you were doing a with binding on an observable, if you want to get back to that, uh, the observable itself and not what's inside that observable, not the unwrapped value, then you could use dollar raw data. Uh, observable view models, there's some functionality that we're, we're still working on documenting and making sure uh, people understand exactly how it can be used. But observable view models essentially lets you specify that your entire, your entire view model is observable and you can update the entire thing. And instead of re-rendering all your content, what happens is that all the bindings will be notified that the data has changed and, and they'll run again. So there's some cases where custom bindings are not set up the right way to to work with this and we'll have some caveats about how how that could work but rather than re-rendering entire sections this is an interesting this could be an interesting way to uh, update data without having to re-render uh, the options binding generates a change event so if the options change then then we'll fire that change event on an element a lot of miscellaneous performance enhancements some enhancements around the number of observables that are created in different circumstances uh, it should help. And Knockout now uses Grunt. Grunt is a great tool. And thanks to Larry Gordon, who had a pull request to get us going on that one. And, and Steve and, and Michael did work on it as well. And check out Michael Best's Knockout.Punches plugin. Michael did the majority of the work on, on a lot of these really challenging changes for Knockout 3.0. He's done some really incredible work. Uh, follow him at M7Best. Follow him. Tell him. Uh, what you think of the stuff he's been doing. And especially take a look at this knockout.punches. It really highlights some of the interesting things you can do with knockout 3.0. Uh, if I look at it here, here's that handlebar syntax. He's got some stuff for doing filters, so piping. You can do uppercase. Uh, he's got some built-in filters and the, evaluate, and the ability to add your own filters. Um, some syntax for namespace binding, so doing like data.color to set the data dash, a data dash attribute or style.color rather than having to specify it in an object literal. Um, some functionality, uh, the value of this is always an issue in, in knockout when you're binding against things that are out of your scope, like dollar parent. So if I say click dollar parent dot remove place, the value of this may not, it won't be dollar parent unless I bound it. He has some functionality to help wrap things to make sure that the context stays the same. And here's some functionality to let you specify basically the guts of a function rather than a reference to a function. So some really interesting things in here that take advantage of Knockout 3.0 functionality. So thank you. That's a quick tour of Knockout 3.0. Visit knockoutjs.com and the GitHub site uh, for more information.
Thank you.